Okay. Let's start. Today is the uh, Defoot Awareness Week run by the Western Pacific Region. The theme this year is the crusade against lower limb amputation. And we, our region agree that we will focus on education to protect tomorrow, which is the a theme of the World Diabetes Day this year. Uh, my name is Dr. Kulapha Sisawat. I'm from Thailand. And today I will be moderator with Dr. Professor Hari Krishna. We all know each other already, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, hello everyone. Um, our by our agenda, we will start with the opening ceremony by Dr. Vijay Viswanathan, President of the Food International. Please share. My name is Dr. Vijay Viswanathan, the President of the Food International, based in Belgium. On behalf of the board of the Food International, I would like to welcome all of you to this flagship project of DFOOT International, which is the Diabetic Foot Awareness Week 2022. I would like to thank the regional council members and the board members for making this successful each year from 2020 onwards. We have seven regions of the, of the DFOOT International with the Saka region, NAC region, Africa, MENA region, Southeast Asia region, and Western Pacific region. And we have allocated one day for each region from November 7th to November 14th, 2022. I hope this program will be useful to you and will enrich your knowledge about preventive diabetic foot care. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Vijay. So um, by agenda, the first will be our honor guest, our keynote speaker for today, um, Associate Professor Asis Nather from Singapore. We all know him well, I'm sure. He is the founding person of the diabetic food care in our region. He has worked very hard for a long, long time. To me, he is like a father in diabetic food care in our region. So today we are very honored that he accepts our invitation to be the keynote speaker for today, sharing his experience about um, diabetic food care and education in our region. So he will speak about effective education for diabetic food care in our region. Please, Professor. Thank you very much for the kind words, Dr. Gulapa. I would like to thank Dr. Gulapa and Dr. Hare Krishna Anaya for the kind invitation to invite me to give this keynote lecture to this week's Public Awareness Week in the Western Pacific. It is an honor and privilege to talk on effective education for DM food care in the Western Pacific region. The issues I will touch, first, who do we educate? Then what do we educate? Thirdly, who best to conduct the education? What medium to choose for the education? And number five, perhaps most important, for effective education, we must reach out to the community. How do we do this? It could be done at four levels, in hospital, outside the hospital, in the rural areas, and finally, at, in public awareness programs at national level, or that last level, we need the government to succeed. WPR is one of the six regions, you heard Vijay, headquarters in Manila, 28 countries in the Pacific, Oceania, and parts of Asia. In our region, one in eight adults have diabetes, 206 million, is going to swell to 260 million by 2045, we have 2.3 million deaths, the highest of all the regions, an expenditure of 241 billions. This is 25% of total global health expenditure is on diabetes. We account for over a third of the total number of adults with China with the largest number, 140 million, compared to India, only 74. 
Hawaii and the Pacific Islands more than three times more likely to have diabetes compared to Asians and whites. We must find out what's wrong and, and, and uh, correct this. 22% in Samoa, 40% in Hawaii. There are risk factors there. The mission of the board, DFOOT, ending avoidable lower limb amputations due to diabetes worldwide. And you heard the president. The board is going to make sure it's going to be achieved, the board, the president from India. From our region, we have Hare Krishna Naya uh, representing the Western Pacific. The flagship project, and probably the most important project in the world, Diabetic Food Awareness Week. We are only one of the regions doing this now. Uh, at this current moment, there are others going on in other parts. The e-newsletter has been launched. This is a good medium for education too. It provides a good fair forum for sharing experiences, providing education, and sending news of the happenings in our diabetic food world. You heard about the online education series. One module can be prevention, education, East meets West program, you heard already, and the Diabetic Food Awareness Week. The theme for IDF World Diabetes Day this year is education to protect tomorrow. In our country, we have the second highest prevalence of diabetes in the developed, among the developed countries, not something we are proud of. We are second to USA. It's a number two cause of death of ill health and death after ischemic heart disease. It causes one billion every year. They are changing dynamics. The Asians are at a higher risk of developing type two diabetes. As they become richer, uh, compared to the other races, they brought in unhealthy wealth and lifestyle, leading to higher risk of obesity and diabetes. Asians have low BMI, but higher percentage of body fat. Not good. Diabetic food strategy needs to be two pronged. Strategy one, prevention. 10 to 15% of diabetics develop a food ulcer. Eight out of 10 non-traumatic amputations due to diabetes, 85% preceded by a foot art. Therefore, it's important we should prevent the ulcer from forming in a diabetic. That is priority. The IDF showed in their Time to Act publication that they achieved 60% reduction in amputations through preventative foot care. You can prevent this by team approach, education and food care and food care. Such programs are cost effective and cost saving. When prevention fails, the food complication is best treated by a team approach and a critical pathway. Remember the same team you need to do your prevention and education. Enough evidence to show that team approach reduces amputation rate, Faglia, Driver, Larson, all say by 50%. Look at this, a whole row of others. Martinez, pathway plus team approach reduce to 10%. We have the same approach. We use Martinez style. A team plus clinical pathway. We reduce the major amputation rate from 31% to 11%. A new team has been formed in Singapore in Sengkang General Hospital by Dr. Francis Wong King Lin, who worked with me as in the NUH diabetic team for one year as my resident, uh, but he's, he's now a senior consultant. As the team, the Sengkang team orthopedic podiatry, now plastic surgeons on board, this is Francis uh, launching his new team and one of the slides that he used. So the key strategy to management of diabetic food team is prevention. But the key to prevention is education and you need education and more education. But education is not all, it's only 90%. Annual food screening provide the rest. So the formula I would suggest is prevention equals education plus annual food screening my figures may not be entirely, uh, you agree, but roughly about acceptable, 90% plus 10%. So don't do education alone. 
When you do your education, do this as well. Get your 100% worth of prevention. Education and food screening are the first recommendation in several guidelines. The IWGDF, 16 recommendations. Canadian guidelines, first two items, prevention, education, screening. Australian guidelines, whole booklet on prevention. Download it, it's useful reading. ASEAN guidelines, we also have set up one board of experts, which I chat. Uh, we, we likewise follow suit. Hare Krishna, author from Malaysia. Luvinia Thompson from Philippines, from Singapore and from Thailand. Our guidelines, number one, prevent development of diabetic neuropathy. Number two, prevent ulcer development by good care of the feet. Number three, encourage patients to go for regular foot screening. So it is settled, it is important. But who are our patients? Who are our clients? Who do we educate? We did a study on the socioeconomic profile of diabetic patients with without diabetic problems. Myself, endocrinologist, my deputy, Francis Wong King Lin, my chief resident then. And we found that they are, the, our clientele, lower socioeconomic status with sedentary lifestyle and poorly controlled diabetes. These are the people we have to focus on. Who do we educate? Well, all the diabetics touch people and their caregivers, but don't forget the professionals, 20% of the time reserved for them, they also need to be educated. What curriculum do we use? We need simple ones on care of diabetes, care of the foot, the need for footwear. Who best to conduct the education? Us, from poor clinics, smaller teams, from the hospitals, bigger teams, whatever they are, all can conduct education. They know best the multidisciplinary nature of diabetic food. They know best why we need to prevent. Pamphlets on this, care of diabetes. Many patients do not know diabetes. Start there. Make them understand. And make them understand why they must prevent all complications of diabetic. That's knowing diabetes. We educate them. Care of the food. Many do not take care of the food. Poor hygiene. We need a guide. Educate them. Many do not wear shoe outwears. We need to educate them, guide them, a guidebook. And it must be in all languages. In Singapore, we have four languages. So we have it in Malay, in Mandarin, and in Tamil. In all the languages you need. If you are interested in any of these guidelines, they are published in the appendix of these guidelines in English. And this is completely printed, these whole guidelines in this journal and you can get access to it. We have actually written a book when we wrote this pamphlet, also a practical guide for patients understanding diabetic food. The priorities being done from the publishers and so on, patient book uh, a bit low, so we publish others, but they promise me next year we will do this book for patients. So we have written many books for educating doctors, nurses, podiatrists, other allied health. First book, Diabetic Food Problems, The Diabetic Food, Surgery for Diabetic Food, to educate professionals. The latest is a guide for general practitioners. This will come out in February next year and uh, hope to educate not just GPs, but all doctors, all nurses, all medical students. The ASEAN guidelines was also written as an educational tool. If only those receiving them would read them, they will learn a lot. We had completed an Asia-Pacific training book for professionals by another sponsor, another vendor. But unfortunately, while it's completed in 2019, it never got published and it never got online. Now, these are the booklets I will share a little bit more. Knowing diabetes, things you need to know, what is diabetes, causes, symptoms, complications, diagnosis, treatment, healthy lifestyle. What is diabetes? Regular monitoring, checklist, healthy lifestyle, diet, exercise, no smoking, and no drinking. We need a guide for happy feet, care of the feet. Hygiene, nail care, all of importance of inspection, 
debunking the common misconceptions. Check this. Avoid this. Tips when you go traveling. We have another guide on feed uh, printed by the cluster, which is uh, us in the Western cluster, in four languages, taking care of your feed, a simple one. So we got two guides for care of the feed. The third one, shoe What? Why is shoe important? What makes a good shoe? What makes a bad shoe? The do's and don'ts uh, of uh, when choosing a shoe. Before wearing shoes, what are the things to do? Socks, check for wear and tear, check for foreign body and a common music, and so on. We shift now to another gear, to the other 10% of prevention, food screening. This should be targeted at primary healthcare level, the polyclinics, and in the general practitioner clinics. All newly diagnosed diabetics must be screened to detect the food that risk. Levery showed that reduced the major amputation rate by nearly 50%. So we can't miss this. We have to do it. In our Ministry of Health guidelines, food screening yearly in addition to kidneys and eyes. Where do we do this? Primary healthcare level, in the polyclinics, in the general practitioner clinics. Not in hospitals too late may have complications already. Our screening protocol, history, examination, ABI, TBI, monofilament, classify, IWGDF, now they have four categories. Then we give advice on food care and advice on footwear in the screening. We give education and then refer if necessary for early intervention. Look at the protocols. Only two has patient education inside. And we followed Jerry Raymond and, uh, and us. The rest, no. But I think you should do it. That's the time to educate them. We have time. During the screening, we educate them. That's our uh, space to teach education. The IWGDF has now updated the risk category to four levels, very low risk, low risk, moderate risk, high risk, based on history, pulses, monofilament, deformity. And so we are here, follow them. Very low risk, examine once a year. Uh, moderate risk, once every three months. High risk, even more frequently. We follow this. Who to conduct the screening? Best performed by podiatrists, but we are short of podiatrists in Singapore, and there are few or no podiatrists in many of our countries in the Western Pacific region, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand, Philippines. So we train nurses and assisted nurses to do our screening for us. Uh, what do you need? A Doppler? Uh, you don't have monofilament, don't worry, it switch touch test. Uh, you don't have neurotosiometer, never mind, forget about it. Tuning fork, tendon taper, just do the screening. It's not costly. In the Western cluster, only 70% where I'm inside uh, of our patients have completed training. We were ashamed. They gave us a budget, run us food screening course, screen them. So we have a one week foundation course. We have we design a curriculum, we have a board of examiners, we run a course exam, and then followed by one month attachment before we certify them fit to do the screening. They we train nurse clinicians from food screening, education on food care, education on footwear. Three things achieved at the same time. First training course, Malaysia already inside. Regional course next, Malaysia, Indonesia, Hong Kong inside. The fourth, the fifth, and then we ran into some trouble. What trouble? Nothing trouble. We were very successful, too successful. We trained so much food screeners, and no other nurses were coming for our food screening. So we stopped for a while. We trained 62 for Singapore, too much, 33 for Malaysia, and so on. So the course was halted, but I think it should resume very soon. What media to use for education? Talks in your public forums, national forums, inside and outside hospital. Pamphlets in hospitals, polyclinics, private clinics, videos for community clubs, videos for websites, Ministry of Health websites, hospital websites, short video for advertisements on TV, in cinemas, radio talks, feature articles and advertisements in news dailies, 
in all languages. Who best to conduct the education? I've said so, members of the team, but you might want to include in some synthesis others, cardiologists, renal physicians, ophthalmologists, because they may want to talk about other complications of diabetes in the bigger forums. So we need a lot of volunteers, and the best volunteers we found were medical students and student nurses. But to be effective, we must reach out effectively. And this can be done at four levels. Level one, in the hospital. Bring the public into the hospitals. Hourly lunchtime talks as part of the hospital education outreach program on healthy lifestyle and other medical conditions, just screen them when they are there. In public forums in the hospital, half day, etc. cetera. Uh, again, free food screening. Here you are, hospital diabetes day. We educate food care and footwear, free food screening. Very successful. My chairman medical board and CEO, very happy. This is the whole team, the, our whole team there, my deputy is here. Everyone happy, two podiatrists doing food screening on the spot. This is the way to go. Public forum in this bigger one in this year, we had nephrologists, ophthalmologists, cardiologists, because they want to talk on eyes, uh, renal, and uh, cardiac complications. They will come, be joined together, more the better. Level two, outside the hospital, we go out and uh, conduct evening talks in the community clubs. There are 100 all over the island, free food screening. Bigger public forums, Suntec Convention Center, Singapore Convention Center, two to 300 patients will be there. In that case, bigger forum there, and uh, cardiologists, renal ophthalmologists, we learn from them. The cardio says, if your artery block in the foot, send to me also. The artery block in the, in the heart, I will send to you. And we learn that way, pre-foot screening. Finally, in other countries, you have rural areas, not in Singapore, then uh, the DMT may have to conduct two different styles. So Singapore style in the urban center, in the rural areas, you adopt your own style. Talks in the villages with the cooperation of village leaders, free food screening. I learned from India, they have mobile education uh, food vans, mobile food education vans, which goes to the rural areas and free screening. You may all want to follow this. So a bit of government involvement in Singapore, we are fortunate. In parliamentary debate 2016, the health minister declared war on diabetes. Nobody can declare war in parliament, but they did. He chaired the Diabetes Prevention and Care Task Force with the education minister. He knows education is very important to conduct public awareness programs, to promote healthy lifestyles in schools, start young. On these five battlefronts, prevention, screening, control, understand diabetes, do your part. They got their focus right, I must say. More health, healthy lifestyle, more free screening. We selected GPs to do free screening. Minister of Health also hold hands with community development to promote healthy living in the community, to reduce the prevalence of diabetes. They've gone that far to get more people to screen for diabetes. So he summarized. The war on diabetes will not be a quick battle, but a long war requiring sustained effort. Success will be far-reaching as it will curb not just diabetes, but other related diseases like heart disease, renal failure. To improve their lives and reduce the burden on their families. The Prime Minister highlighted this serious problem. It is because many people are not worried that I am worried. It's precisely because many people do not take diabetes seriously that it has become a very serious problem in Singapore. Prime Minister, National Day Rally, 2017. So finally, at national level, public awareness programs at national level is what it is, and it's a massive undertaking for any country. Educational talks on healthy lifestyles in schools, colleges, polytechnics, universities, talks on radio and TV, features in daily newspapers, advertisements in cinemas, in shopping malls, in MRTs. Well, our diabetic food team appeared in a Jurong MRT, we were very glad, on buses and on taxis in all languages. 
We need the government involvement for this. Several ministries, not just education, not just health. Health, education, community, communication, family development. We need a joint ministerial task force between representatives from the various ministries, representatives in particular from the Ministry of Health and doctors and nurses from the primary health care services and from the hospitals in order to succeed. So this is our formula in the end. Prevention of diabetes is our target. Education today, the talk is focused here, is 90% of prevention. Who do we educate? Patient education, professional education. The other 10% is food screening, primary health care, hospital level. But central to all this, you need government involvement to battle all these areas, to tackle all these education, healthy lifestyle, screening, control, and treatment. It's, uh, it's published in this. If anyone is interested, you can read this. So in conclusion, for effective education, first, we must conduct more education sessions. We must educate more diabetics and caregivers. We must screen more diabetics. That's the first point. But how do we do this? To do this, to be effective, we must reach out to the community, not just one level, four levels, in the hospital, outside the hospital, in rural areas, and public awareness programs at the national level. And for that last level, we need government involvement to succeed. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for your kind attention. Thank you very much, Prof. I think for the uh, keynote, session that's been given, uh, there will be no questions. Uh, anyway, I would like to uh, thank uh, Dr. Vijay Viswanathan, our president for DECO International, who is able to actually uh, come in live for this session for the Western Pacific region. Uh, Dr. Vijay, do you want to say anything? Yeah, Harry, uh, first of all, I would like to thank Western Pacific region, Dr. Gulapar is there, and yourself for uh, taking up this very important crusade or our mission uh, of ending the amputations. I'm here particularly to thank the participating organizations because today is the last day. I would like to thank IWGDF, who was one of our partners. I would like to thank the Asia Pacific Association for Diabetes in, uh, in the Western Pacific region. I would like to thank the World Union of World Healing Societies. I would like to thank the Pan-African Diabetic Food Study Group, Wounds Canada, and the Diabetic Food Research India for joining as partners, uh, participating organizations in this week. We had a very successful uh, Diabetic Food Awareness Week, as you would be following in our Facebook. And I'm very happy yesterday, Professor Hari Nair, Hari Krishna Nair, and uh, Dr. Laura Lovell had a good discussion on East, Easting, Easting the West. So I'd like to welcome all of you and goodbye. Take over, Harry. Thank you very much, uh, I think uh, from that, we have heard uh, quite a lot of uh, countries and associations are involved with the, our debris uh, food prevention week. So with that, we move down under to two of our good friends. It's a, uh, what do you call this? Uh, a combo of uh, Stephen Twig, who is the professor of endocrinology and diabetology and uh, Georgina Frank, who is the podiatrist of the Masters in Public Health. And the both of them will tango during the uh, experience sharing from the uh, from Australia. So you have the floor. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Prof. Harry Krishnanair and uh, Prof. Galapa and everyone, hello. Uh, my colleague Georgina Frank will present the main part of the presentation. We know we've got eight minutes in total, and then I'll hopefully make a few comments at the end. So over to you, Georgina, and I think you're right to share your screen. Great. Give me a few minutes. The technical technicalities always get me. I can see a lot of friends there, Professor Zen Rongzu. Nice to see you. Shout out. Hello, everyone. Give me one second, my computer, yes. And Dr. VJ, whilst George is just setting up the share screen, all right, there we go. There we you are. don't Straight see my notes. Place. Thank Hopefully you, no well problem. done. All right, um, so here, very Australian screen. 
Um, I'd like to acknowledge uh, the traditional custodians, the lands, the waters and the country on which we stand and thank elders past and present and future for their continued custodianship of the lands on which we individually stand within Australia. So Steve, I'm going to, Steve's going to talk about Diabetes Australia. We're going to be going through some of the resources that have been developed over the last couple of years and also during COVID. So Steve. Yeah, thanks, Georgie. So a couple of issues. We did talk last year about um, Diabetes Feed Australia initiatives to do with uh, the clinical care guidelines. And these were adapted ones from the International Working Group on the Diabetic Foot. Um, I won't spend a lot of time on them, but just to say amongst the recommendations, two thirds of the uh, uh, recommendations were adopted, but a significant third needed to be adapted to Australian conditions. And these are accessible on Diabetes Feed Australia website. And in addition, a number of them have been published now in the Journal of Foot and Ankle Research. And we have found then that it's a way in which we can take the International Working Group Diabetic Foot Guidelines and make them more, if you like, appropriate, specific to Australian conditions. Thanks, Georgie. And so part of the swathe of um, education materials that we developed, we also had the Foot Forward Initiative, uh, which was launched over 2020-21, and it's the National Diabetes Australian Services Di uh, Foot Forward program so it's a healthcare initiative to promote foot care and diabetes nationally um, and key was providing integration between foot care services and delivery for people with diabetes it had a strong indigenous focus and we wanted to create a sustainable platform to avoid and prevent amputation due to diabetes and maintaining quantity and quality of life because Australia is a big country and depending on where you live it does affect the way and how well you are looked after or whether you will have an amputation and so there were two big tranches we've got education for healthcare professionals but also for people living with diabetes and so that they could work together um oh, all right computer issues <laughs> um so we had a quite a few as you can see so the first thing we did was um integrate the pathway and that was based on the 2019 guidelines but we also included active foot disease pathway and the idea was to assist primary and tertiary care practitioners in assessing foot risk of diabetes diabetes related foot disease as he had said it's finding people and screening but also how to instigate timely referral and special to specialist services when required so it sort of it escalated um, and it also provides a lot of education for tertiary uh, practitioners we also moved into, uh, as a result of COVID and subsequent challenges that went with it, we opted to keep our healthcare community engaged and informed through a series of live and recorded webinars. Gulapa was one of our wonderful guests, uh, where we, every lunchtime, every Wednesday, we had an hour to talk about everything foot and diabetes and everything complicated. And then we also developed Foot Forward e-learning online modules, which became really important over COVID. Um, which focus on foot, promote foot screening and foot health amongst primary healthcare professionals. But there's also specific modules for our Aboriginal healthcare workers. Um, and they're spe specific modules with case studies that are relevant for GPs, general practitioners, nurses, allied health, podiatrists. Um, but we also have extension model modules for the super keen uh, in peripheral diabetes, artery disease and diabetes and diabetes related peripheral neuropathy. And then we also developed a foot check training program. So this was co-designed with our indigenous, uh, indigenous colleagues um, so that they can do it online, but there's also a practical hard copy version and resources that can be adapted to local community needs um, that encourage and support practitioners to do a foot check, identified risk, foot health education, but also know when to refer on. And I won't go into much detail, but we also developed a database where Consumers can put in where they live and find out if there's a high-risk foot service or a podiatrist close by. And we've got the high-risk foot service database, which Steve can talk in more detail um, later if anyone's got any questions. 
And then of course, a really important part of it is that we had to develop, we developed resources for people living with diabetes. So they come in 10 languages. We're currently working on developing a culturally appropriate material for Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. It comes with videos and we've also got pamphlets and a web portal. And then lastly, we've also been involved with um, diabetes, foot disease and wound management in the Pacific Islands. So this is Nikki, who unfortunately has COVID. But Interplast is a not-for-profit that sends teams of volunteer plastic and reconstructive surgeons, podiatrists, allied health to provide life-changing surgery and medical training in 17 countries across the Asia Pacific. And among the allied health is one podiatrist, and that's our Nikki, who has um, been providing education on diabetes, foot disease to nurses in the Solomons. In Fiji, physiotherapists provide that um, education and it's the high risk foot learning mode and a high risk foot learning module, which is included in final year of the undergraduate curriculum. So with COVID face to face, of course, changed. So they started doing online modules, uh, learning videos um, for all healthcare workers in the Pacific Islands. And soon they, they're gonna be re releasing two learning modules for diabetes foot screen and offloading. And that will also be free. So, that's most of what we trying to keep within our eight minutes. I think we might have done it. Yeah, um, I might. Uh, I might just add on thirty seconds just to say our yeah. high risk foot service accreditation now yes. has about thirty sites accredited through us across Australia. So anyone that needs to look at high risk foot services with standard setting and accreditation, we have an established process which is working well, um, and. Secondly, the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons, they are feeding into the process that Georgie described there in terms of uh, helping to provide in, further engagement in diabetes and foot problems, complications across the Western Pacific countries. And I know that um, we have a lot of work to do. And Dr. Hari Krishnan there, we would have liked to have made a bit more progress uh, liaising with our Pacific uh, Ocean country neighbours. But we are making some progress in that space. So, uh, yep, we'll finish off there. Thank you. Thank you very much. I think, uh, if you have any questions? Oh, I think it's crystal clear so far. Uh, Harry, uh, our yeah. mission in default is ending lower limb amputation. So, Professor Twig, do you have any data on the amputation rates in Australia now? Has it come down after all your measures? Yeah, we do, Dr. Vijay. Unfortunately, we have state-based data, particularly from New South Wales, the largest state. And the um, overall, I would like to say we have better news, but we have up to 2000 in 2019. And the data shows the lesser amputations as a group have gone up. In some local health districts like our own, it's flat and the major amputations are going down, but the ones are below the ankle, uh, state-based are going up. And when we look at hospital admissions, there was a nice diabetes care publication by Pete Lazzarini and colleagues uh, earlier this year. And we find in the last 10 years, the hospital admissions for amputation have, and foot-related complications have increased in the last 10 years in Australia, about, about 3% per year and more than you would expect purely from an aging population. So we haven't solved the issues at this stage, but we're hoping when we get the better formulated standards accreditation and some of our programs roll out. But uh, no, I think globally, at least um, we reflect what's happening uh, in Australia rather than finding the solution. Thank you. Wish you all the best. Thank you. Thank you. Very interesting uh, experience from Australia. And I, I learned a lot. You have made a wonderful project and you really make it move forward like your project name. Thank you. So our next uh, country to share the experience is from China by Professor Wu Quantum. Okay, uh, let me show my slides. <clears throat> okay, good afternoon, and Dr. Grupa, Dr. Weiji, and uh, Dr. Xu, and uh, Dr. George, and uh, all the colleagues. Very nice to see everybody online. And uh, it's my pleasure to be here to introduce the, the condition uh, in the channel about the diabetic food management. 
So today, uh, my topic is uh, diabetic food management and the pandemic in China. So today, uh, you know, um, I'm an oncologist. So today is uh, World Diabetes Day. So in this year, its theme is diabetes and education to protect tomorrow. So uh, in this morning, and um, we uh, see the uh, sad news that uh, a famous TV in China, uh, it was reported that even in the past year, we try our best to to care and to treat the diabetes patient and uh, also save their uh, no lips. But we also have very high the patient loses uh, limbs. Uh, we. It's reported that 280,000 people lose their lower limbs in China per year. So it's a, a very sad news here. Uh, as we read uh, recently, uh, a paper published in Nature, it's a multinational of a consensus about the COVID-19 public health threat. Uh, the fun is that we should provide health and social policies and to bring this public health threat to an uh, end. That means we should to get, work together and uh, to help the patients like with uh, diabetes or some patients with uh, uh, food problem. At the beginning of the COVID-19, the famous podiatrist, Dr. Armstrong, published a paper. It said that uh, we should help the patients so different uh, methods. Like uh, he reported that he used the telehealth get home based the health service for the patients with the diabetic food. Also, we performed a study uh, about the diabetic food in China. We see that the patients with the diabetic food always have, have had a non denied in admission and uh, a higher risk of the mortality. That means the patients always um, admitted to the hospital uh, for a long time, for a long time. So, what kind of was uh, the difficulty we faced here? So this is a uh, uh, lockdown in the city. We said there's no, no people on the street. But we said that different and uh, lots of the severe patients with uh, diabetic food. And uh, some of them with very severe infection, food infection. So here, not only is the diabetic food, Sometimes they also combine with like a DKA. They not just uh, infect the food, but uh, the skin in the another place in, in an, a other organ. So more and more the patients were admitted through the emergency department or referrals so like this. So what can we do? So we use the MDT for the diabetic food treatment. And uh, like these cases, we successfully saved the uh, lower lip in the diabetic patients with gas infection, MODS, and uh, sepsis through our MDT work together. We also use another uh, method to help the people with really severe infection destroyed. So what we have done for the patients with heal the diabetic food after discharge, like we educated and uh, guided the diabetic food patients through like the WeChat, and we also through the TV and the radio. Sometimes we also use a TikTok for the young young guys, and uh, sometimes if the time is is already is possible. We also indicated and helped the patients in personal. It's in the city. Sometimes we use this one and the training the physician in the community health service center. This is in the city. 
and uh, this in the zoo room. So we uh, training the doctor and uh, also educating the patients. So this is a regional action. How about the national action to against the diabetic amputation? This one will a uh, handbook for the diabetic food patients uh, under the Dr. Shui's guidelines to deliver the all over the country. And uh, that almost uh, the doctor read it, especially in the uh, oncology uh, department. So we also have the expert consensus on the diagnosis and the treatment of the diabetic food by CDS and uh, diabetic food and the peripheral arterial disease branch. So we discussed during the uh, epidemic and uh, how to uh, treat the patients and uh, save the uh, diabetic food problem. This is the flow cut for the patients with the diabetic food. And we see lots of the uh, province with a different way to help the people and save the Limbs. Here is at Chongqing, my hometown. We based on the emergency work, established a new model from the family and community health service center to the diabetic food care center. This is in the uh, Chengdu in another city in another province. And this is in the Shandong, east of the China. This is uh, uh, Wuhan, Hubei province, the middle of the China, the training the uh, for the technicians and the nurses. And this is in Changsha. And uh, this one is in Shanghai. Shanghai also uh, had established a new model for help the patients with the diabetic food. Uh, we searched for the uh, papers published in last year about the diabetic food from the China. We could see that uh, almost 300 papers have has been published for the diabetic food. We uh, also attended some the meeting through the virtual. Uh, we also hold some the international uh, conference in this year and lots of the uh, prof famous professor to uh, speak here and uh, treating the doctor in China uh, focused on the diabetic food um, and another disease. Yeah, in, including the Nicholas and uh, including Dr. Weiji, and uh, also we say that Dr. Glupa almost uh, four years ago, uh, speaking here, okay. So another good news is Dr. Sui and the uh, owner that invited as a member of the IWGDF editor board, uh, worked for the IWGDF guidelines for the 20 and the 23 uh, update. So this is a group, maybe in the next year, we could read the review the IWGDF guidelines. Here is my mentor, Dr. David Armstrong, and my mentor is Dr. Shi here. So th thanks for your listening. Thank you, Deng. Uh, Harry, can I take just one minute? Uh, Please, go ahead, Vijay. Yes, thank you. So we have five full members, five votes from China. From India, we have four. Now in 2022, we have only two members from China, three vacancies are there. So I request Professor Zhu, my good friend, Zhang Rong Zhu from Beijing and Dr. Deng, Professor Deng to fill up three full members from China. China is a very important country. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Wei Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Thanks. We move on to the next uh, speaker. Uh, Prof. Deng, thank you very much. Prof. Zhu, a no? uh, oh, very, very old friend. So we move to uh, Indonesia first. Uh, Dr. T. Julie Edi Tarigan, who is actually covering for uh, Dr. M. Yunir, our member of the uh, 
National Representative for Indonesia. Uh, yeah. Patrick, can you present first? Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Professor Hari, and thank you uh, for uh, the food, for inviting for this uh, uh, important meeting. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleague, uh, Professor. I'm Dr. TJ from Indonesia, and on behalf of Dr. Yunir, I will uh, present the picture, diabetic food picture of Indonesia. But it's, it's actually not Indonesia, but Jakarta, because uh, Jakarta is a stop referral. Uh, uh, our hospital in Jakarta is top, top referral. And I think the program, the pro, the, the the, pro, the, the program of the diabetic food mainly in Jakarta. So let me share the slide. So in COVID, in COVID era, the amputation rate is uh, in our hospital is doubling. So before COVID, the amputation rate are around 30%. And today, during that after COVID, the amputation rate is uh, increasing around uh, 60%. And the other ones is uh, the, prog the, pro the program of diabetes prevention and food care mainly yeah, held in Jakarta. We need the um, uh, uh, systemic program across the, all the countries, including of the, uh, all the province uh, in Indonesia. So this is uh, our government dreams yeah, to uh, develop a diabetes, diabetes center across the Indonesia. And of course, this is the, our hospital in Jakarta, Cipta Mangun Kusumo Hospital. And I think uh, around uh, 3,000 hospital, government hospital uh, across uh, Indonesia. And this is uh, what uh, government want to uh, develop the diabetes center, yeah, diabetes center uh, in all the province. I think the, the diabetes center will be stratified as uh, advanced, higher, intermediate, and basic, and basic. So of course, diabetes center will cover the program of diabetic pools uh, also. So this is the stratification of the diabetes center, yeah, uh, advanced, higher, uh, intermediate, and basic. As you see here, program of uh, diabetic food we uh, so, uh, must be uh, provided in all the uh, all of the level uh, diabetes centers. So I think uh, in in the next future there will be yeah there will be every a single government hospital will have the uh, diabetes, diabetic food service. This is our dream in the, in the, in the, in the future. So the concept of uh, diabetes service is uh, preceptorship networking. So the higher hospital with, uh, will uh, uh, gate, yeah, gate the lower hospital yeah, to make a diabetes, diabetes center, including of the food service. Yeah? This is the in, in a big city, and then the other ones is in the hospital in the province, in this district area, and of course, in the next future will be also provided in the primary health care center. I think this is the hierarchy of diabetes, uh, diabetes service in Indonesia, from community to the uh, primary, primary health center and then uh, secondary health center, and of course the ultimate uh, service in the uh, tertiary health centers. So we need uh, all of the uh, diabetes uh, service will be provided yeah, from the, the bottom to the, the the, the top of the service. In Indonesia, we have three main organizations that uh, related to the diabetic food activities. Yeah. One is Indonesian Society of Endocrinology, yeah, Perkini for the uh, organization for the physician. The other is Indonesian Diabetes Educator Association. Yeah. This is for the educators mainly 
nurse uh, diabetes educators. And for the layman, we have the Indonesian Diabetes Association, Persadia. So these uh, uh, three organizations mainly serve the diabetes food program in the uh, from the community until the tertiary uh, hospital. For the uh, uh, physician activity, yeah, like in our hospital, yeah, we have uh, a weekly weekly pedis meeting, yeah, this with the multi multidisciplinary team, yeah, uh, discussing the uh, food problem in our hospital, sent from the other hospital. This is done weekly. The other ones is for the internal medicine uh, residents, yeah. Uh, we do uh, uh, give the regular uh, refreshment, refreshment, food, food refreshment lectures for the, all our resident internal medicine specialists. Yeah, the other ones is live demo for the residents and all the res registers for the resident. I think for the uh, two month, every two month, we have around uh, ten resident. Yeah, uh, homing in our uh division and today we have uh around uh, 12 uh register registrar yeah candidate for endocrinologist that that uh, in our center yeah they learn from uh, the senior how to uh, do the food cares the other ones is uh diabetic food workshop yeah the workshop is included for the doctors and uh, also for the uh, nurse educators, uh, yeah, and also for the, the GPs, yeah. So this is usually we do it, um, yeah, minimally we do it once uh, uh, years, yeah. And the other ones we have the Jakarta Diabetes Food Meeting, yeah, in Jakarta. This is, I think, the first uh, Jakarta Diabetic Food Meeting. And maybe we will do it in uh, binually or uh, trially, yeah, uh, diabetic food meeting in Jakarta in the next future. Uh, today, we are also preparing for the translation of uh, uh, guideline, yeah, uh, international WGD food uh, guideline for that. So we, we will have uh, Indonesian version, yeah, uh, uh, this guideline soon. So I think it is uh, uh, under uh, uh, construction today. The activities for nurse educators, uh, we have also training yeah, dedicated for the nurse. Yeah? So the uh, nurse from our hospital and the other hospitals sent to us cross, uh, from cross to the Indonesia. Yeah? They send and we train them and then uh, back to the hospital and we uh, we hope that they provide with the doctors there, yeah, diabetic food clinics. The other one, the other programs, yeah, we uh, develop a module, yeah, local food care module for the educator, nurse educators. So this standardized module, yeah, for the training, yeah, training for the educators, nurse, and also the GPs, yeah. The other one, of course, yeah, workshop for the, the nurse, yeah, but the workshop, yeah, integrated with the, uh, uh, the uh, 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 workshop for the doctors, for the GP and for the internal medicine uh, specialists. For the Lyman, yeah, we have the uh, symposium, yeah, for the diabetic food, uh, for the, of course, for the patient. And in our uh, clinic, this is our outpatient clinic, diabetes outpatient clinic in our hospital. Yeah, providing the regular education or group education, yeah, including uh, diabetic food topic here and delivered by our resident, also sometimes uh, our uh, registrars. The other one is the our uh, uh, routine program is a. Uh, uh, in celebration of uh, World Diabetes Day. This is the, I think, uh, celebration of uh, World Diabetes Day. Yesterday in uh, in Jakarta, the, the patient, uh, the patient uh, learned about how to do the food exercise. And I think the food exercise is uh, 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 routinely, yeah, 
talk uh, touch by the uh, uh, educator in their own ha hospital when they do the uh, educational group. The other one in, uh, is uh, footwear support and at artificial foot program. This is uh, uh, one uh, uh, some of our patients that are receiving the footwear program and also uh, artific artificial foot program. Yeah, so they. Uh, they uh, receive the, this uh, uh, pro, uh, the, this uh, this uh, kind of the uh, footwear and foot uh, uh, artificial foot, but we need more and more yeah uh, footwear uh, uh, development yeah and also artificial foot development since yeah many patient yeah after uh, after uh, uh, amputation. They don't, have, they, they, they don't have the artificial food. So this is our still uh, problem in, in Indonesia, yeah, high rate amputation due to many problems, uh, mainly in COVID era, and then the low reimbursement coverage yeah, from the national insurance for the, for the diabetic food uh, problem, diabetic food disease. Yeah. So the hospital, uh, here must uh, pay uh, more, yeah, because since because of the the reimbursement is not is not enough, yeah, from the uh, the Jakarta uh, the national insurance. So the uh, the the hospital may, must pay more for the rest uh, if the the cost is more more than the the reimbursement. Still, big problem with footwear and artificial food. Yeah, so this is our center is uh, not that many. Yeah, uh, center in Indonesia provide the footwear and artificial food. So, so this is still our problem, and we need uh, uh, le uh, learning. Yeah, to our uh, other countries how to accelerate accelerate. Yeah, providing footwear. Yeah, footwear for the diabetic food. Still low commitment in providing diabetic food care. So it's just many hospitals think that uh, diabetic food care is not priority. Yeah, it's not priority. So they, the, 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 the management do not want to provide the uh, uh, specific food, uh, diabetic food care. Yeah, this many ho uh, hospitals do not have the, the diabetic uh, food clinic today in Indonesia. I think this all uh, from uh, our side, uh, back to Prof. Harit. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Tree. Dr. Tree, one of the things that we see in Indonesia, it's huge with thousands of, <laughs> of uh, islands. Yeah, so yeah. It's a major limitation. So how would you like to, I mean, how do you suggest to actually try to uh, get the technology going, get education going, Across all these islands, I mean, if we talk about Zoom and all that, sometimes you find that you know not all islands have got proper Wi-Fi, internet, and everything else. Yeah, so, so I think so. Internet is everywhere in in the district area. In district area, yeah, not maybe not in the primary care center, but the in districts area, mainly all of uh, district area across Indonesia have uh, internet. Yeah. So the the imp very important thing is the commitment, the the willingness, the willingness, yeah, of the doctors, of uh, management, of the uh, uh, hospital uh, hospital director, yeah, to provide, yeah, a particular diabetic food clinic or the diabetic food center in the every hospital of the government hospital. This we need the the uh, willingness yeah and also the government local government support that's that, that's things yeah this is the the main thing yeah and uh, if after we push yeah to the local government to provide diabetes center in the next future including the diabetes food services maybe uh, the problem will be uh, partially uh, solved in the next future Thank you, Prof. Hari. You're still mute. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So I think uh, 
it's not many questions. The other one was actually, I think, just a remark from uh, Nikki Frescos on Dr. Deng uh, about your examples of your TikToks. That's a great approach to get me messages across. So she's wondering if you can share an example from there. I mean, it'll be good. Dr. Tree, myself, all of us can make a TikTok. I mean, we can use the TikTok <laughs> that I from China. So. Okay, I think uh, next, what we call this, we move on to uh, Hong Kong. Yes. Can you hear? Jackson Chan Chi Fai is actually a senior consultant, orthopedic, and a trauma consultant. He's working at uh, Show Care Medical Center and also uh, in uh, Yan Chai Hospital Integrated Medical Center. So, Samson is a very old friend and uh, one of the main founders of the uh, Diabetic Foot Society for Hong Kong. So, uh, Samson, you have the chair. Thank you. Yes. Okay. So, um, uh, thank, uh, good afternoon. Um, thank you, uh, Alex, uh, Harry, and uh, 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 it's uh, appropriate today to talk about uh, this uh, uh, diabetic awareness in the uh, World Diabetic Days. So um, I'm Samson Chen. I'm, uh, I'm from Hong Kong. I'm, I'm the, currently the president of the Hong Kong Society of Diabetic Limb Care, but uh, I also participate in the Asian Pacific Diabetic Limb Care. So uh, in Hong Kong, we had uh, uh, a number of activities in these uh, diabetic uh, food patients. Uh, is, is in Hong Kong is still an influential society, but people have still have a lot of problem with diabetic food. So uh, I used to work in the in, in the government in the hospital authorities, but now I moved to private. So I I was uh, uh, seen. Uh, the care of this common problem in the common people in both perspective, in the common public perspective, and also in the private perspective now. So over the years, we have had um, to, to deal with the diabetic food ulcer. So um, whether it is an acute or chronic situation uh, encounters, uh, but in hospital setting, it's uh, used to be, uh, they admit into the general hospital. Uh, already with ulcer, ulcerations. So, and these are very common diabetic food ulcer, as we all know. It. But some of them are the uh, sore in the foot and also in the back and buttock. But these are here unhealing chronic wounds. So, uh, they have um, a, a long standing history of uh, ulceration and then healing and ulceration and so on. And so much so that some people have a compound wound that is, they have exposed to the deep structures, uh, the compound wound. So um, these are uh, uh, primarily not surgical wound unless they are complicated. So uh, uh, at, the, at the time when they are admitted, uh, the surgeon, they usually are admitted in the orthopedic surgeons. So the surgeons will have to assess whether there is a surgical situation or not. Of course, in a deeply infected uh, situation, uh, in the complication, then we because that. But after dealing with the uh, acute complication, uh, we still have the ulcer to deal with in the long term. So, this personal involved in, in the public hospital, I primarily first of a big surgeon. But in our hospital, we also have podiatrists. So, um, in the last 20 years, before that, we didn't have podiatrist care in the hospital, but now we have, uh, usually in general hospital, we have one or two at least. And, and also since we launched the diabetic foot care uh, courses and teachings, uh, we have wound care nurses uh, dealing with diabetes. And these, uh, uh, for their career in recent years, they had uh, even had promotion in to nurse consultant or specialist nurses. So uh, they have um, contributed significantly, if not most importantly, to the care of diabetic patients, apart from the uh, medical personnel. So the diabetic nurse most important. And also part of them are what we call community, community nurse. That means they go out to the community after the patient is discharged and care for the patient. So, uh, and this uh, provides the continuation of care 
or uh, Hong Kong diabetic patient living in the community. In hospital, we also have the allied health, notably the podiatrists and the uh, prosthetists and orthotists. These are people who are making uh, artificial limbs and after the amputation, or they make or forces for a patient to wear such as a total contact or forces for the, uh, for the protection of the plantar ulceration. But of course, nothing would achieve if we have a good nutrition or diabetic, good diabetic control for the diabetic patient. So in the hospital, we also have nutritionists. And of course, money is uh, always the problem of behind everything, every problems. So the social worker, the medical social worker, we also is also a part of team. So in hospital, we have this team of personnel involved, or the physicians, us, the podiatrists, the wound care nurses, community nurses, and the allied health personnel. In our education, we started with the, a wound management education program. So we have team, a wound team lectures providing all the basic uh, biology of the diabetic wound. And uh, these are the uh, fundamental uh, understanding for any kind of personnel to understand why is the diabetics, uh, high blood sugars uh, has caused a significant uh, impairment of wound healing and also vascularity of the wound. In, so these are the basic knowledge. And then we have uh, advanced wound management conferences. We had this uh, over a few times already. And since 2019, we have the uh, World Health Forum from traditional to new advances. So we will show you some pictures. These are one of the burning conferences uh, we have in 2016. By the way, since the uh, COVID-19, we have to uh, modify many of the education uh, activity into a uh, meeting like this one, the Zoom meeting. Uh, but we are, uh, but of course, nothing is like the uh, a direct face-to-face -face education when you are teaching wounds. So we're looking forward uh, to the near futures when the COVID-19 is over, we are able to once again have uh, uh, organized courses. So uh, in this, another one, we had the uh, uh, symposium on wound healing on traditional new advances. We have a number of uh, guest speakers, which many of the Asian countries, uh, our colleagues has done. So, so we had this, and we had a work group. We have a work group in the hospital, which uh, formed the wound management work group meeting under the wound care nurse. So, the nurse consultant, as I just now, but well, these are special specialty nurses, and uh, they uh, share some of the uh, most of the edu education of the of the of the patient, as well as uh, to the junior colleague, nursing colleague. So these are very important uh, bridging of uh, knowledge. Uh, so we formation the wound care team. We have to establish guidelines and protocol, both for the uh, personnel to work on, but we also have this guideline for patients and they have to look up. Of course, this would be written in Chinese so that our people, which is 90% uh, are Chinese, were able to read and write and understand. So these are very important communication, uh, uh, needless to say, and these are very important. So they were also, so we just showed some of the workflow in a combined wound clinic. So these are the people you can see, you see, apart from myself, we have on the left some uh, podiatrists and the PNO colleagues. So we, these, these, are, these are the work group in our uh, society. And in fact, they are the council member. So and, uh, we have a number of people uh, working um, uh, side by side with us for so many years. So we had this guideline for, for, for making uh, when people have their pin check and the, the, the pin site and they have the wound swap uh, guideline, when you can take a swap, when do you 
uh, regard the uh, culture uh, as significant. So we also have well, uh, some of the referral. So obviously, um, the doctor or the specialty nurse can cannot see all the patients. And uh, not of this, uh, as I said, the, uh, the, the wound care nurse and even the community nurse, they need to know when patient uh, is going to have a problem and need to be referred to further specialists such as us. So we need to draw our attention. So we have need to establish some referral guideline, the protocol, and, uh, and the, the logistic, the workflow of this wound specialist and also has to establish. So we have is that education class, you can see that they're a mix of uh, audience and of various age, even elderly patient or the uh, patient with uh, 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 diabetic, diabetic complications, so such as retinopathy, uh, uh, nephropathy, and also uh, neuropathy patients. So, so these are the group. So we have consultation. We have uh, this, you can see the setting of this one is in a community hall back. So in Hong Kong space, of course, is very tight. So a lot of these activities uh, uh, need the help of the local council to uh, 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 rent out, uh, to let us have space so that they to do the activity. So, so we have this, um, uh, in, in the last 10 years, the wound team, team program, the nursing staff training schedule program. So we totally have to trial for this uh, uh, training schedule so that people can advance from one, from one big basic courses to, uh, to advanced courses. So people, uh, they, they would have a more incentive and they would have more, um, that they have a better, better ego and so on and then they advance to the nurse. So, so we have this, uh, uh, the wound care reversal system, as I say, you can see uh, uh, from, from the, when the patient entry to whether they have uh, outsession was healing, was not healing, and to a good number of assessment to, to and then to have uh, some decision making, whether they would need to go back to uh, the community when the case closed, and they, or they go to further assessment. So these are the uh, uh, referral system. So uh, these are some of the statistics I mean, uh, in 10 years ago. So we have a number of wards in the hospital and to do and this observation. So the, and we found that the, after this um, has been established, the number of uh, uh, special wound care for the surface type has uh, been, been able to be in a culpable level at the hospital and also hence the surgical uh, need or amputation is reduced in the, in the, in the, in the beginning. So last, uh, for the time being in the house again, we have uh, some postgraduate certificate courses for the soul and wound care. But we also sometimes are able to send some of the uh, advanced, uh, uh, it's the AP and advanced nursing for overseas training program protocols. So we had had before, nurses went to places like Professor Aziz in Singapore and to uh, uh, Professor uh, Harry Krishna in Malaysia before. So with very uh, uh, beneficial outcome. So in uh, this is uh, one of the activity in our society that so the other, we have the Diabetic Limb Care Society in Hong Kong. And yearly we have, we have a booth for, uh, for education committee. So this is the logo of our society, which is part of the Asian the Pacific Diabetes Care Center in the, the Mothers Association. So we have uh, 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 organizing uh, some uh, 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 diabetic food uh, uh, chair evaluation in China before, and these are one of the uh, um, uh, proprietor of the, the enterprise in the food care specialist. It's a big company. The Dr. Kong's uh, and they he uh, is he's uh, as a willing enough and also not only providing enough uh, uh, up to date uh, up state of the art 
for thesis and for photos to our patient, but also he sponsored many of the activity in terms of financial support. So I thank Dr. Kong for that. So lastly, we have this uh, 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 website. So you, you have time, you can visit some and see some of the activities. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, I'd like to last say to send the club for the organizer of this and uh, Kerry Krishna, of course. Okay. Okay, thanks. Gulapa, over to you. Yeah. <laughs> I just chopped the ink myself a long time ago. <laughs> long time ago, yes. <laughs> thank you, yeah, Samson. Okay. Thank you, Samson, for sharing okay. your experience uh, in Hong Kong. Okay. Okay, is there any questions for him? If not, we shall move to the next one. Um, the next will be Malaysia uh, by Professor Harry. We all know Harry very well. He is, how should I introduce you? He is, <laughs> right, right now he is president and chairman of many, many organizations. But I know that those positions are not big matter for him. To me, he is always a superman. He fly all over the place, helping people everywhere. So, and, and he's very nice. He always say yes to everyone. So today yes. he will share his global and also Malaysia experience on diabetic food care. Please, Harry. Thanks, Lopa. I think what Gulapa says is uh, straightforward. I always prefer Hari, it's just nice. Okay, and the thing is, uh, in terms of looking at diabetic food, basically, I'm also VP for Depot International and President for Asia Pacific as well, for diabetic limb problems at this time. So, diabetic food is something that we started more than uh, 25 over years. So, if you look at what we call this, the, the theme that we are looking at proceeding against lower limb amputation and education to protect tomorrow. So, I will cover what are the things that you need? And you see, the world is huge. Seven different regions, basically, for seven days, uh, giving sessions for more people to learn about what can be done. And in our, what we call this uh, program, Western Pacific region is quite lucky to actually have the session on the day of uh, the World Diabetic Day. So that's something, it's the first. So I'll give a bit of our Malaysian perspective. I'm from Kuala Lumpur Hospital, which is the uh, largest hospital in Southeast Asia with about 2,500 beds. I'm heading the uh, wound care unit here. We start off with diabetic foot first. But then the thing is, we found that, you know, you can have diabetic limb problems, you can have carbuncles, paruncles, you can have so many types of things when you have got uh, diabetes itself. So we expanded to wound. Now, one of the first things I think uh, Jose Luis mentioned yesterday is you must have a very strong commitment from the uh, Ministry of Health and from the different organizations. So that's important when you talk about uh, education to prevent uh, any problems this coming up. Now, there's a macroscopic and microscopic perspective. Macroscopically, we have got a national review committee. So we got endocrinologists, we have got uh, rehab physicians, we have got vascular surgeons, plastics, and all that, all coming together. So this goes to what Mike Edmonds mentions about the multi team approach. So that's important. And then we also have got a circular from the Radio Journal uh, of Health, whereby there is a wound care policy, there's formation of wound care committee at all the hospitals. Huh? So now we have 137 hospitals and 634 health clinics with wound care. Uh, trained personnel. So it's top-down approach. And we also have this thing, which is a kit, just to manage what they call is diabetic foot complications. Because no use talking about the best and the, the sun, but you don't have any products to use. So these kits are actually given out to many, many places, huh? like to the health centers, even to the hospitals, basically. And uh, we also helped out in the Maldives, basically, where they have got their team coming to us. And they've got lots of diabetic foot cases. This is a clinic in Maldives, a simple bit sufficient, but at least, you know, it can manage those cases. In Solomon Islands, the kits were actually sent through uh, Nikki Frescos and also uh, Jan Rice with Intermarker when they went to Solomon Islands to talk about the food, a bit of podiatry work over there. And then we have a ward basically under the Institute of Medical Sciences. It's under the surgical department where I'm also a professor at. And here we used to get supply our dressings to help these patients. Then we formed the ASEAN Council. Now, these 10 countries basically where we're looking at all types of wounds and also to collaborate among each other. In Laos, this is uh, Dr. Botep, who is the Deputy Director General of Health, who is a rehab physician. And we also support in the kits for those cases. And during COVID, what did we do? 
we actually did a program called Adopt a Client. That means we basically, what we call that, looked at uh, poor patients. We did home nursing because they can't come to hospital. It's a bit more difficult, higher chance. Decentralization basically during COVID and all that. So we did it for free. So we did about 5,150 cases of uh, dressings, huh, basically, over that two years. And in terms of education, post-basic diabetes is something that we started by more than 25 years ago. And then we have got post-basic wound care, specific into wound itself. Then ET nursing, where they look at WOCNs, certificate in clinical wound care, where we look at uh, the foot. Now the postgrad is already in. This is the uh, certificates that we actually uh, do for a six-month program, where they actually look at all the different uh, types of managing wounds. Now, the postgrad diploma after this has also moved on, where we actually now come up with a master's program starting next year. So at least that's important. This is what Prof. Aziz has used. This is something where the six countries sat and did the ASEAN Plus guidelines. We still use this and we have a Malay version of this. All right. So at least two, uh, the main language is actually captured. Then trainings, basically workshops, even, you know, uh, in terms of attachments by all the state departments from different parts of Malaysia coming over to uh, Kuala Lumpur Hospital. And at the same time, what we call this, we have our forms for risk assessments and all that. And these forms are basically used in most parts of the country. We are quite uh, straightforward with them. We allowed them to use it. And we also got this kind of uh, an algorithm where you can actually look at the wound, a diabetic foot wound, and you can tell you exactly what to do. That means a 13 step wound assessment and how do you actually uh, look at the goals of wound care itself. And it tells you a bit about podiatry care also because in Malaysia, unfortunately, we do not have any podiatrists. Now, I go back to wound bed preparation. The year 2000, you talk about wound bed preparation, debridement, bacteria balance, excrete management. Then we talk about the time concept in the year 2003, just to show you the evolution of uh, this thing. I'm not going to touch too much on the classifications of diabetes itself, but in terms of wound, triangular wound assessment, it comes in 2017. That is locally looking at the diabetic foot, where you look at the bed, the edge, and the peri wound skin. Then you have got Leanne Atkins coming out with timers where you've got R for repair and S for social and patient-related factors. Now, this is important when we talk about education in prevention. Time CDST, the time clinical decision support tool. What does it say? Assess the patient. Bring multi team approach. Control the underlying causes. Decide appropriate treatment and evaluate. All right? So all this must be taught to them in terms of education. So this is a publication that we put in in the uh, Journal of Wound Care looking at uh, the time CDST to the medical officer and myself. So let the medical officer assess, manage diabetic foot, and then we see whether it's actually easy to use or not, this kind of uh, thing. So the usability is very important. And then we talk about wound hygiene. I think it was mentioned earlier also. So what is in wound hygiene? It's something that we are all been talking about. They have already put it into a nice system, calling it about, I mean, telling about cleansing, debridement, refashioning, and dressing the wound, and looking at biofilm. Now, biofilm is something that we need to teach our students, especially when they have got diabetic foot cases. In terms of the World Union of Wound Societies, they talk about assessing wound infection. Now, why I'm saying this is, this year we just launched the Diabetic Foot Ulcer Consensus Document for Asia Pacific. And if you look at here, basically you've got contamination, colonization, critically colonized and local infection and systemic infection. But the new IWII, the International Wound Infection Institute, which I'm also sitting on the board, we talk about local infection, spreading infection, systemic infection. We don't talk about critical colonization. So it's something that you have to teach because why I say this is in the Asia Pacific, Western Pacific region, diabetic foot inf infection is very, very predominant. Now, in this study of 340 patients, we found that, you know, a lot of plantar aspect wounds are there. So you need offloading. 41.5% of them actually get infected. All right. So these infection rates are quite high. So we have to uh, help out in actually cut down infection in this. Then we have different ways of debridement, huh? whether it's hydrostatic debridement, ultrasonic debridement, megatherapy using what we call these maggots, which help even in biofilms, like these patients, I can see the improvement basically of these diabetic foot cases, all right, where limb salvage is important. That's one of the victims of uh, D-Food International. That means basically avoiding or preventing avoidable amputation. So this is infrared therapy, all right? We've also used different types of uh, products here, biotisiometers, vacuums, and all that all can be used. What Wound, wound rounds and wound presentations where the students have to present, the, teach, the, the post basic students, even our staff have to present the do's and don'ts in terms of health education, in terms of soft tissue assessment and foot assessment. This is very important. 
this is something which you have to teach again and again and again. Like what Prof. Aziz has mentioned just now, it's not just education, but also foot screening or foot assessment. So with the different tools, basically, nail cutting is something we also do because our nurses have taken over the job of podiatrists, vascular assessment. Kuala Lumpur Hospital has got a vascular unit, but not all hospitals. All right. Foot exercises. I'm sure if you look at Gulapa's leg, she's got very nice legs. So she can show you how to do foot exercises because you have got gastrocnemia tightening. You've got tendon Achilles tightening. So you need to do this, not only when you fly. So all this has to be taught. Then we have got newer things like laser-guided RENS cameras. We've also got books basically coming in. Huh? All right. We've got many, many types of books looking at dressings, looking at diabetic food, the Asian perspective. We even uh, translated it to Malay. And then in terms of using, uh, I mean, our ASEAN guidelines and also the bulletins, the magazines, and all the brochures. Now, these are important for us to actually look at food care, footwear. And today we're also running uh, programs in the hospital. Other in in uh, innovations are like the algorithm, as I showed you. We have a spy perfusion machine where you can look at perfusion of the foot. All right. So this is important because why you need to stress is no more 10%. Right? It's now 40% of ischemia. So we have to be very careful to prevent this. And you can see advances imagery. We start using uh, wound dog or wound assessment uh, tools. We can actually use quite a number, like RENS cameras, where you can use Silhouette Central. We can actually use an iPad, all right? And quite a number of these are actually being used. And this helps in terms of looking at patients. Like in this case, this particular patient actually had uh, topical oxygen, all right? Where we actually use uh, hemoglobin uh, sprays to help in uh, healing these patients. So even in diabetic cases. Huh? So you can look at the app where it shows you the healing rate, reduction of wound size, all right? Another patient with uh, what he calls uh, left leg traumatic amputation, all right? So in terms of showing you how the apps can help. We publish a paper looking at apps. It saves about 25,000 US dollars per nurse per year in the usage of these apps. So this is something very, very important. Now, the other thing in uh, diabetic foot, we talk about leeches, basically, biotherapy and all that, using for uh, those cases of where you have got uh, flaps and everything else. Now, in diabetic foot, we also started doing studies on with leeches, and it seems to be very, very helpful in terms of increasing the profusion, reducing the swelling, increasing, reducing the pain. Now, tilapia fish skin is another one that we started using, okay, high levels of collagen, growth factors, fibroblasts. So, this is something that we are actually doing on uh, diabetic foot also. So, with that, what they call this, the other things such as topical oxygen therapies and a lot more consensus documents looking at identifying and treating foot ulcers in patients, diabetes, saving feet, legs and lives. So all this was done. We also did a particular uh, 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 intervention with, where, with Ergo Medical, where we had 50 clinics, which actually had uh, neurological kits given to them together with the fast track pathway, the info card, the D4 International, and then we looked at how whether they are able to diagnose diabetic peripheral neuropathy quickly and worse. And we have managed to actually increase the awareness and all that. So a lot of programs are important to actually help these people. And as I say always, education, education, education. With that, thank you very much. Thank you, Harry. Any question for him? No? I think we all agree that he is Mr. Superman. He fly around everywhere, but he still has time to create lots of good things, lots of innovative uh, activities and programs that benefit for uh, diabetic food patients. Thank you very much, Harry. The next will be the turn for Myanmar, which will be presented. Uh, uh, through the pre-recorded video by Dr. Chin Miao Han and Professor Min Tong. If host, Mr. Host, if you're ready, please play. Thank you. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for giving me an opportunity to share my experience regarding low education technique and resources for diabetes food care education in Myanmar. In private healthcare sector or the Myanmar, GP, family physician, and major healthcare provider to the community, including diabetes, food care, and education. Private GP and family physician are provide diabetes, food care, and education to their patients at their primary care clinics. Myanmar 
Medical Association, GB Society, Myanmar Med Diabetes Association, Wonke Society, collaborated with government university, provide the CME, CBD activity for GP and family medicine for the diabetes food care and the Myanmar diabetes food care program. To provide the effective education for diabetes food care, we need to keep updated Medicare education for diabetes food care by professional for that. General practitioner conference, general conference, specialty conference, and mainly and weekly CME, CBT, foreign zone meeting conducted by the respective society are uh, used for as a techniques. Face to fit education techniques are mostly used in general practitioner clinics, social media, YouTube channel education, Facebook education, and private communication with community are applying for diabetes food care education, mass media, television, newspaper, journal and magazine articles are also used for local education techniques for the diabetes food care. PR education method, patient to patient, patient to family, family member to patient are also used by us, the Myanmar Diabetes Patient SPD Aging Group, Facebook group, and Myanmar Language Hack Education taught provided by the professional look at article published in journal. However, we have the many challenges to provide the effective education for diabetes food care in Myanmar. We have limited it uh, how many GP engage in diabetes food care and education and its effectiveness. And how many GP interested in diabetes food care and prioritize in their daily practice and education for the diabetes food care by GP practitioner, their family member. Besides it, we have a political commitment, support or the healthcare authority on diabetes food care are limited, especially for private general practitioner. State practitioner or the country saturation and economic recession seriously affect on healthcare, including the effective education for diabetes food care in Myanmar because of the limited health education health insurance system. Out of pocket money used for the healthcare costs, limited accessibility for the research to do their primary health to do in primary healthcare. So we professionally encourage and support our patient for patient empowerment to have the diabetes food care and effective education. Now we notice that our professional also had to be encouraged, support by our set to overcome the intelligence to provide the effective education for diabetes food care in Myanmar. So we turn to the ASEAN One Council, Diabetes Food International, ASEAN One Care Summit Conferences and Global One Conferences to provide in the up-to-date knowledge and education method to provide the diabetes food care in Myanmar. Thank you so much. Thank you, Myanmar. Um, I'm not sure if you are still with us. I see. Yeah, you yeah, I see. Ah, you know. yeah. Uh, so, prom your down presentation. Also, we also have the prom your down presentation. Professor, your down presentation. Welcome to everybody. Today, exciting CME will be the affected education for the diabetes food care. Focusing on the local education techniques and resources. Myanmar Wonke Society would like to share our own experience on that aspect. This will be the two parts. First part, I will be present on the government sectors for the local education techniques and resources. Second part will be presented by the Professor Tim Yuhan, focusing on the Public sectors. As the first part, the low education and technical resources is focused on the government hospitals, 
Myanmar had five medical universities, two nursing universities, one paramedic schools, all are the university based, curriculum based education program. We have been studying the integrated curriculums, including the wound care, education, all the both undergraduate as well as postgraduate medicines. As government and private hospitals are the main training centers for the healthcare professionals, there will be the cross professional experts. They all are the trainers for the doctors and nurses, which is easily available in all these centers. Another way of education technique is through the our society. We have regularly launched the education programs for the general practitioners and all the interesting nurses across the countries, like the wound care that, that 360 degree, diabetes food care management in collaboration with the Indian Diabetes Food Care Societies. And also we have our own Myanmar language program to all of the patients community as well as doctors and nurses community through the our media. Another way of education is through the regular wound care summits organized by the Myanmar Wound Care Summit. This wound care society is including all the basis of local experience by local experts and international experience by the, our inviting experts from the international. Another way is we send our people to the Philippine wound care centers. We work together with the Philippine wound care centers, get the learning opportunity from there. And we have a collaborated project with the Indian Diabetes Food Care Societies at Yangon General Hospitals. So all together, 32 participants are actively participating as a trainees by the local as well as the Indian experts. Now that we is through the, our Myanmar Medical Associations, we have done two successful courses for the basic wound care training and diabetes food care, case-based practical demonstration and discussion in between the local and the national experts. We also do have the online wound care training through the Zoom CME, particularly in the COVID crisis. Find the, our enthusiasts and anti for by the Myanmar Wound Care Society, having a large number of the audience participated in online education program, and they all have learning opportunity and start initiating the development of wound care specialist centers in public and private hospital as well. Wound care education in the community will be the one of the milestones for the Myanmar Wound Care Society. So also through the collaboration with the other partners like endocrine societies, they do have 30 community diabetes centers across the country with the help of project by the World Diabetes Foundations. Where diabetes food assessment and basic wound care training for all the staff working in these community centers and also develop the referral pathway for the high risk cases, when and why to refer to the specialized centers. Another way of education technique is through the family members to family members, from the doctors to the family member. Give this self-wound care education program at home for the family members during hospitalization and follow-up clinic, group education program for the patients and family member at the government hospital diabetes care units, Audiovisual media used for the public talk during the World Diabetes Day. This is a mass campaign we have. And also use of the public media like Facebook, our favorite media, radio, TV, and apps, newspapers, and mobile phone. Finally, I would like to conclude my presentations. All the resources and education techniques will need education policy and strategy. We need to define 
strictly availability and accessibility of the wound care facilities throughout the centers. We need the technical facilities for the education media. We need to define the targeted populations for the education to achieve prompt and intimate benefits for them. Second, what part will be presented by the Professor Timuan concerned with the public sectors. Thank you so much. Thank you, Myanmar. Uh, any questions for Myanmar? Yes. If not, thank you for sharing your experience with us. Thank you to, to both of you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. I think next we move to the uh, next session, which is uh, Philippines. I would like to invite uh, Dr. Luino Thompson, who is the uh, diabetic foot surgeon and the president of the Philippine Wound Care Society and uh, member of the National Representative for the uh, Defo International. Uh, Luin, you have the floor. Thank you. So good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Hari. Thank you, Dr. Gulapar, for inviting me to share our experience with the Philippine group. So this is the timeline of the COVID-19 in the Philippines. Uh, started last uh, January 2020, and then on March 16, it's already in the ECQ. So on March 16, the government of the Philippines imposed the enhanced community quarantine. It's a total lockdown uh, restricting the movement of the population except for necessity, work, and health circumstances in response to the COVID-19. Additional restriction mandated the temporary closure of non-essential shops. As you can see here, this is the uh, traffic before, and then during the lockdown, this is the restriction. In the healthcare system, COVID-19 became a game changer in terms of priority of patients' management. Non-COVID patients were put to sideline and wound care, unfortunately, was considered non-emergency. The government had urged and regulated that all non-essentials like in wound care can be treated remotely from the hospital to prepare for the expected influx of infected patients. As a result, the services and surgeries that are deemed non-essential are being shut down immediately. Hospital outpatient, uh, wound care department have been placed in non-essential group. So the non-healing wounds like in diabetic foot were left untreated and unmanaged, resulting in significant uh, medical issues like infection, sepsis, the need for limb amputation, and even death. Diabetic foot uh, wound care has changed dramatically. Prior to the pandemic, we provided regimented care to our patients with ulcer. Then during the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, it turned healthcare upside down, shattering the wound care supply chain in the process. So these are the many uh, challenges and these are the reason why there's are, there are lots of under treatment neglected wounds, uh, victims of faulty dressing deliveries, debridement not being done by the surgeons or the healthcare workers, and of course the lockdown of facilities. Because uh, during that time, uh, the priority was uh, COVID-19 patients. On the other hand, there was also opportunities wherein we were able to improve the clinical system. And I think one of the important thing happened in the COVID-19 in cases of uh, wound care is the telemedicine. So this is our experience uh, during the pandemic. During the management of diabetic food, it is mandatory to observe protection protocol. Medical care, healthcare workers, and patient safety is the essential objective to avoid the transmission of COVID. A multidisciplinary team is a must and elective surgery should be momentarily postponed as uh, been uh, indicated by the government. In patients who require limited surgery, operations can be delayed as such delay do not alter the condition or its management. For patients who require emergency surgery, uh, we use the hazmat. So, and then we have to consider the patient if it is a COVID or non-COVID. 
So for those COVID, if it is emergency, we still have to do the surgical procedure. However, we are in level four. So in cases of diabetic foot, as I said, we have to know if it is an urgent surgery. We have to look on the severity. If it's uh, urgent, definitely we have to do surgical intervention. So for the Philippine Wound Care Society, these are the activities during the pandemic. As I said a while ago, we had this uh, telemedicine and of course the Zoom meeting like what we are doing right now. And with the help of Dr. Natter and of course uh, Dr. Hari, we had cooperation with the APDLP and the POPAS, this is the uh, Foot and Ankle Association of the Philippines for the global care of diabetic foot. I think many of us here attended this uh, meeting. And another one, we have also a lots of uh, webinar. Uh, we have this uh, venous leg ulcer, diabetic foot, um, and then the natrox. So during this uh, pandemic, we had a lot of webinar in order to educate our co-workers, the doctors, the consultants, and even the residents. And for the, for the lay people, uh, the first that was last year, it's a purely a Zoom meeting. However, in spite of the Zoom meeting also, we ask our participants to have to enjoy the meeting. So thereby they have to record their activities and then we have some uh, contests also. And for this year, uh, we have a hybrid. So some of the contestants and the participants were in the monitor and some of the patients or some of the participants is in face-to-face. Uh, -face. Although you can see here that we are uh, looking, what we are doing here is that we, of course, we see to it that we have to do the healthcare protocol. So right now, we're working with the international partners like the Asian Wound Healing Society, the group of Dr. Hari, the World Union, the Asian Advanced Wound Technology, and others. And for the local, of course, we have to work hand in hand with the Department of Health and then the different medical societies and organizations. And for next year, we're going to tap the Diabetes Philippines and the Institute for Studies on Diabetes Foundation in order to help. Um, more extensive communication with our healthcare worker and of course for our lay people. So for the society, the aim of the society is to educate not only the wound care specialists, but all uh, healthcare worker, the patients, the relatives, and then we have to stimulate that we have to work together and we have to explore the other wound technology. So right now, there are lots of wound centers in Metro Manila and even in, in the provinces. And we have also some centers who was the hyperbaric oxygen therapy. So what we want is to integrate the network of different cooperating physicians and the wound care facility to care for our diabetic patients. And for the challenges, uh, Unfortunately, here in the Philippines, we are in in a more for me. Uh, we I am and we are in a private practice. So this is the problem, the financial financial challenges. Although we have this uh, uh, medical insurance, it's not enough to pay for the patient uh, expenses. So low reimbursement and another thing, probably Doctor Gulapa can help us here. We have a problem in the footwear and in the government hospital, only few has a wound care center or diabetic food center. So we have to encourage them to have more commitment in this. And in order to improve the functionality of the future, we have to do the diabetic food screening, education, education, education. So we have to educate our doctors we have to educate our lay people. We have to educate our partners. And we have to collaborate with the international and local partners. 
with that, uh, thank you very much, Sari. Louis, one aspect I think is on looking at uh, food screening. Have you all started uh, en mass food screening? That means like all islands, either by stage or by groups. And were you able to inculcate that within the uh, nursing and medical schools at the early stage? Uh, right now, that's the problem uh, because we are in a private uh, institution. But in my wound center, in our institution, I I encourage and actually it's mandatory for all diabetic patients to have a diabetic foot screening. And at the same time, as you saw a while ago, for the lay people, we're doing some uh, program and doing the diabetic foot screening and education to our lay patients or the participants in that uh, Congress. Thanks, Win. I think we move to the next one, Grapa. Yes, thank you. Next one is uh, Experience Sharing from Taiwan by Dr. Yuen Po. Unfortunately, he could not uh, join with us today in person because he had some emergency surgery today. Uh, so right now he's still in the operating room. So he sent us a pre-recorded video. He just finished it and sent to me right before we start. Thank you very much, Dr. Yuen Pua. For the host, please, if you're ready. Please. I'm Dr. Pua from Taiwan. Now I will start to share the, our experience in sharing education, tech, and resource in Taiwan. As you know, the worldwide prevalence in diabetics has dramatically increased. And in 2008, when there were estimated around 366 million people with the diabetic worldwide, however, you can find there was a big increase around 552 million people by 2030. And then look at the population, the main majority of in Asia and also Western Pacific region. And another also look at the population, you can look at not just in the Asia region, it's a worldwide problem. And in the United States, in the Europe, they will increase. But highest population actually is in Asia, a special Southeast Asia country. And as you know, in Taiwan, you look at that uh, in the past study, the total diabetes in our population is around the um, or 12, um, uh, 1.2 million people. So they are around the 6%. And the main majority uh, more is the male uh, higher than female. And the number is uh, increases since the look at the population since 1997 till 2012. And look at the another prevalence study you can find, actually the people now is um, around the 10 to 11% population has diabetics. And also diabetic now the population is more than 2 million in Taiwan, and around 10% has diabetic for us during uh, you can look at each year, they have uh, 22,000 people need to die in birth rating and need admission for care. And this year, around 30% uh, uh, people receive the amputation debridement. And also around 15 uh, to 25% has a higher level uh, amputation. And another study in the past, until 2009, that's up, uh, since 2000 to 2008, that's the each year just uh, 1,300 people get the diabetes being admitted for foot treatment. And uh, however, this time, still higher uh, amputation uh, around 30%. And since that, the uh, government focus and start to education to treatment. And so 2005 to 2012 in this study has from the national wide database. You look at that so the patient, the population amputation rate was around 70.5%. And also the age population is more 
uh, is around 65 year old and uh, also the prevalence the more male than female however the amputation rate in this study also at around the eight eighteen percent so all the study and uh, in taiwan we have uh, because the people or oh, yeah, reimbursed by the National Health Insurance, 10 to 100 percent since the one, uh, 1995. And for recently, the government focus on the prevention. So each year, the diabetic patient they need to uh, do evaluation by peripheral artery study and also the nerve evaluation study, and uh, also they follow uh, the follow the the uh, international working group Gainan, uh because this has this uh, by our society and corporate so now the most the medical center and doctor they follow and but this they need a multidisciplinary team together as comprehensive care plan so not just for the uh, surgeon uh, diabetic endocrine uh, largest and also need to pay for artery and rehabilitation care. In Taiwan, our own care society, we have three major society as one is in charge uh, for the wound care program. And the education course is to improve the patient care at clinical outcome and professional satisfied wound care. A most focus on clinical practice guide and education research and connecting the international wound care community. So the education course, the most focus on provide new wind technology, healthy economic or new medical byproduct, also current expert opinions. During the teaching course, they provide a cutting edge tech and skill for professional training. And also, there's uh, some uh, new uh, modern biological duration each year. They have provided and some education course to for the clinical uh, doctor and nurse staff, and also uh, some uh, physician care. And also cooperate with another society together. Uh, also start to educate the international working group guideline. Uh, focus uh, to different uh, subspecial society and uh, also share our education course with another society such as Infection Control Society, Nursing Home Care Society, Diabetic Education Society. And uh, not just uh, our uh, ourselves, also multidisciplinary team also involved. So some infection course uh, control study for antibiotics, so how to the new uh, treatment for infection wound also involved in our each education course. And not just education, but also training our nurse staff. So we establish different programs for the training course uh, from uh, our society. And also, we also connect the international connection with the uh, ICW uh, training course. Uh, each year, we have different uh, education course involved and uh, limited uh, nurse staff join, but also they can uh, see and uh, bring back to their center. We established the wind care center as a very ongoing because that's the center uh, to our uh, population is aging and also incidence diabetes population and vascular disease. So we established in the numerous uh, wound care center in different hospital that uh, to has the integrated team together for the special care. So during the home care and community based service, because the Taiwan population getting elder, so development of community based health care team for aging population is important. So we enrich and focus on the integrated healthy care delivery system. And such is used as computer and hospital system to agree to detect the mistake promptly and ensure optimal wound care for the patient during the in-home care. So finally, I'd like to uh, summarize. The diabetic education and resource in Taiwan, actually, the government has uh, started to focus and cooperate 
with the numerous uh, society. So holistic approaches for wound care is important, not just focus on the wound care. Thanks for your attention. Yeah, thank you, Ren. I think uh, next one we move on to. Uh, okay, I would like to introduce my very good friend, very close friend, uh, Dr. Kulapa Sesawasdi, who is the rehab physician consultant, very uh, soft speaking, humble, sweet lady she is. And now she's the director of the uh, Srindom Orthotic and Prosthetic Center. So, congratulations on the appointment so we can do more work and help more people. And uh, with that, I would like you to present, which I'm sure will be a, will be a super presentation. So you have the floor now, Gulapa. Thank you. Thank you, Harry. Okay. Hello, everyone. Uh, I have heard lots of experience from many countries already. So now I will share uh, our experience in Thailand. So when we talk about education, uh, we can divide it into education for healthcare provider, but and also another part is education for patients. For education for healthcare providers, we have done many different ways. Uh, in the past, over more than 10 years, we do uh, the educations on site. I mean, we use the center in Bangkok and then invite everyone to join. We found that uh, diabetic food workshop is one of the most popular workshop. Many, many people come to attend. But after 10 years, I did the uh, self-evaluation and I found that the result is not that great. I found that not many people who come to, uh, to study from our workshop, when they go back to their, uh, uh, their province, or their hospital, not many of them that succeed in build up the diabetic food care there. So right now we change our uh, policy. Uh, in the past, I mean, before COVID, in, uh, in the past three years before COVID, our group as a like, speaker group, we formed a team and then we go to do the workshop on site. And we found that we, we learned, we got a new brand new, our new experience. We learned that when we go on site, we have more team, the whole team can come to join the workshop. If we just stay in Bangkok and people come, maybe a nurse from one hospital come to attend. So when they go back, they don't have enough team to build up the team in their own uh, hospital. So when we do it on site, uh, the whole the whole team in that province come. So it's already good for building network for them. Also on speaker side, we learn about their local uh, difference, their local custom, their local. Uh, how they live in their daily life. So there are lots, a lot more experience sharing when we go, when we do the workshop on site. So uh, after that, we tend to do the um, on site uh, work, diabetic food workshop for teaching. Unfortunately, in the past three years, we got COVID, so we could not go anywhere. So in the past three years, how we do? We have to do everything through Zoom, uh, like a teleconference. We still try to keep education for, for everyone. Uh, luckily that because we have done workshop for many years. So we right now we have um, 29 networks, hospital that already had diabetic food clinic set up. So we do the consultation with them. We do uh, like a brief or short um, scientific education program with them. So that's how we uh, did in the past three years during the COVID. And right now COVID is over. So we plan to do it this, the, the same way 
we will go out there and work with them uh, in the local on, on their side, not our side. So that's one experience that I learned about um, education for healthcare professionals. professional. Um, today, we are all here together. We already experienced that we learn a lot from each other. So I think the idea of doing conference like this international is possible. Perhaps if you agree uh, after this, we can set up like the host from country to country and we take turns, right? If you agree, I mean, in the Western Pacific region, we have something in common in terms of custom, um, in terms of um, weather, something like that. And we can share our experience and we can help each other in the, uh, in the region. Uh, that's my purpose. Okay. In terms of education for patients and caregivers, uh, we can do uh, teaching. Oh, sorry, this, this picture is wrong, but it's okay. Uh, we can do, again, we can do on-site and through uh, online. For the on-site, we can do a group. For example, um, today we have the, it is the World Diabetes Day and at my hospital, we have activities for patients and caregivers and society also. Um, we have lots of activity, try to teach, educate people who come to, to uh, the hospital and we have class. Uh, this picture is something special that is not only doctor who talk to the, the patients and caregivers, but we invite uh, diabetic patients who already had experience uh, living with diabetes for 10 years sharing his experience with the others. Uh, I found that many times patients does not, uh, they listen to us, they listen to doctor. They believe doctor try to give them the best thing, but one thing in their mind is that they usually think that doctor, you don't have diabetes, you don't understand. And in diabetes, many people, I mean, many patients, uh, get scared to see a doctor because they're afraid that, oh, doctors will uh, look at their um, sugar number. They will, then they will get, I mean, if they don't give us a good number, it's like they do something wrong and doctor will get mad, something like that. Yeah, so uh, let the patients talk to patients is one technique that is very good that I want to share. Uh, we can also do, uh, we, we also not only like a class, a group like this, we also have like a booth that we divided into like different complications and different stations. So uh, with lots of things on the table, people come in and they ask, about, I mean, their personal problem. So that's another way to, to attack people, attach people to, uh, to, to get more uh, into their problem. Uh, at each booth, I mean, in order to bring our technique that quite uh, success is that we have like a passport. So we set up 10 booths today. If patients come or, or I mean caregivers come and then they, everyone will get the passport. If they can get to all the booths, they get 10 stamps. Then at the end, they will get something like gimmick or gift, small gift back home. That's something they like. So this way we make sure that everyone stop by all the booths. And if they come to the booth, and if they, we catch them, we uh, think that, oh, this needs more attention. They will give them the, uh, how to contact us and how to make appointment with us, something like that. Again, in the past three years, we, cannot, we could not do anything like that. So we do uh, education, patient education online. At my hospital and many other hospitals, we develop our uh, online platform. For Civilite, we have Civilite Connect. 
that patients can connect to doctors. They can make appointments. They can uh, talk to doctors on the on the appointment day. They can talk to doctors, discuss about their problem. So we see each other online. Uh, for the uh, for the diabetic foot clinic, we set up in in Thailand. Line uh, application is is something like uh, WhatsApp or WeChat. Um, but in Thailand, line application is the most popular one. Even elderly people, they um, they get to it. They have fun playing with with line, communicate with people with line. So our diabetic food clinic, uh, we set up the line group for diabetic patients uh, at our hospital. So and we have our nurse to be a manager for this clinic. If they have any problem, they will uh, knock the door by sending message to this like group, and then our nurse will directly contact that patient. And later on, we found that this group is not just for um, not for doctor patients relationship. I mean, caregiver, uh, healthcare provider, and patients relationship. Uh, it also create a group of patients relationship. So patients talk to patients. And one good thing is that when they share their own experience in this group, we can see their message also. So we make, because you know that sometimes when patients talk to patients, they recommend something not, not good, right? Because they got something else or they have their own belief. So this way, they talk to each other, and we still can monitor that. If it's not correct, then we can intervene, we can explain. So this is something fun that, that we do right now in terms of education and patient care. Um, in the past, for the media, education media, in the past, we create like flip chart, we create like a handout and book. And later on, we create like CD. But right now, you know, most of the PC, they don't have PC, uh, CD anymore. So right now, um, so we make like many clips. Like for example, in during the COVID, we are worried that if patient, patient accessible is a, a big problem during the COVID. We are worried about that. So we create this, we work with the department doctor surgeon and we create this video clip how to do your own wound care at home and then we share this to our patients uh, we also and also i mean during the covid we don't want them to get unexpected foot ulcer so everyone suggests patients not to walk much don't walk too much and also, uh, most of elderly with diabetes, with diabetic foot problem, they were locked down inside their house because they cannot go out much. And we don't want them to, to get immobilization syndrome. So we create another set of video that show how to do exercise, non-weight bearing exercise program at home. So even though they have like ulcer, they have foot ulcer, they still can do, can do sitting exercise at home. And we divided it into exercise for uh, stretching exercise for upper limbs, strengthening exercise for upper limb, stretching exercise for lower limb, and strengthening exercise for all limb, for lower limb. And we uh, create this QR code and share to everyone. We use the uh, current like popular social media like Facebook uh, and our live group, Instagram, something like that. Yeah. So uh, this is something we do. Okay, I think this is my last uh, slide. When we do education, uh, it needs effective communication. And communication does not mean just we tell the patients. If we tell the patients, but they don't respond to us or they don't do what we uh, try to convince them to do. It means that we that our communication is failed. So we need to monitor it by patient's response. If patients don't respond well, 
we need to explore further why, what's wrong. We need to understand them more or they have to understand us more what is the, the communication gap. And another thing we, I always teach my residents, people may hear your words. They listen to everything, they hear your words, but they feel your attitude. We found that if they, we show them our attitude, our willing to help, and if the whole team show that all together, it will be a huge power that convince patients to follow our recommendation. So the key to success, we need to work as a team and always include patients in the team. They need to be in the team. They need to, we need to discuss with them also. We need to understand their lifestyle. And you know, diabetic food is a long-term problem. So finally, we will become friends and then we walk together with them for life. Thank you. Thank you, Gulapa. Wonderful presentation. The next will be, oh, oh sorry, there's a question. Yeah, how much importance is given for post-amputation rehabilitation and psychological counseling to amputee patients who are on prosthesis? Is, thank you for your question. It's very, very important. Um, we have, at, at, at our hospital right now, we have the, we call it clinical trace, like a protocol, set up the protocol that we work with the surgery department. Uh, we will talk to patients since before the amputation. In rehab, we call pre-amputation phase. If it's not an emergency case, we will talk to patients before amputation and we discuss with them and explore, uh, support their mind since before amputation. And, but if we miss that, then post-amputation, we will uh, approach patients, we will discuss with them and uh, it has to be holistic care, not only uh, look at the physical loss, but also their mind, how they feel and what they need. And then we can, again, we can go with them once we know, uh, understand their needs. Thank you, Grapa. I think we move to the last country, Vietnam. Dr. Mai Chong Chi will actually uh, present on the uh, Vietnam perspective. Dr. Mai, you have the floor. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Can you see my slide now? Yeah, can. Just okay. Yeah, all right. Uh, first of all, um, Good afternoon for everyone. This is so excited to uh, meet all of you again. Um, and uh, our topic today is the um, World Diabetes um, Day Education to Protect Tomorrow. Um, I, am an, uh, I am an endocrinologist, so I have opportunity to uh, follow our diabetes patient from the beginning of the disease to the end of uh, stage of their lives. At the, at the time of diagnosis, the patient could not imagine the diabetic drug which they had to go through until the last moment of um, their life was so harsh. They had to face a lot of diabetic complications at the end of uh, their lives. Um, in a very recent study in uh, Vietnam, uh, we found that the diabetic patient often disregarded the disease at the early stage, but got to terrify at the complication later. Uh, so um, the endocrinologist set up uh, the uh, the goal, the target of treatment, not only glycemic control, but also further reducing protect from uh, the complication in the future for patient. And the most important thing are we had to empower the patient by providing them the knowledge and the skill to help them manage uh, their, disease, uh, their disease and uh, help them cooperate with the healthcare staff to share the target of treatment. Um, in the last year, our lives 
uh, become the same as this time before the then um, then pandemic period. But we also have some new adaptation activities for both healthcare staff and uh, patients. Um, we had the international face-to-face wound conference in July. Can you see uh, Professor Harris there? Okay. And uh, we also have uh, periodic discussion among doctors and nurses. The content is not only the diabetic food, but also the various fields of wound care and case discussion. I believe case discussion with step-by-step -step instruction and analysis is one of the most important location activities. Um, I think we will focus on this activity in Vietnam in the next year. We also did some um, we also did some essential uh, research in the last year. Now we try to screen the patient at the early stage of the disease and education patient, but they have only risk and the ulcer. And we also cooperate with family doctors to help us screen patients for this activity. Um, we um, we also have very essential research in the Bunty Center at the Tertiary Hospital, such as Jarrett Hospital and the People Hospital 115 to make sure we don't have worried a lot about multi drug uh, multi resistant drug bacteria in the future. And we also have some uh, very side um, activities for the patient too. Uh, we not only create education activity with a traditional approach, this is the activity in Da Nang, a central uh, a hospital in central of Vietnam. And you can see Dr. Le Tung Tay, a young enthusiastic doctor here, who um, educates the patient how to protect themselves from uh, diabetic complications, especially diabetic post syndrome. Uh, and however, we also have uh, virtual approaching activities. Here we have uh, Dr. Sir Wang Nam with his staff talking about that we could care. We recognize that this approach has some advantage, such as convenience and recording reply. Uh, similarly, we have traditional approach with uh, leaflets. Um, and now we have uh, new multimedia platform approach to provide not only diabetic food care, but also on the essential knowledge and skill. And this helps us reach the target of empowering our patient. I think the, the mo this model is like, uh, it is the same as um, Dr. Gulabai share uh, as a previous uh, presentation. And uh, thanks to a lot of diabetic post specialist effort, we have the teleconsultation booklet and we try step by step implement these booklets into our practice. I believe that the healthcare staff should be the great companion to our patients throughout their full life growth, not only for now, but also for the future. Uh, I think that's very important. Uh, thank you for your attention. Okay, thank you, Dr. Mai. Okay, the last session is the open discussion. Anyone wants to discuss anything? We are I, all together, many countries here. It's a good chance to discuss. Uh, Comments, uh, Gulapa? I would like to uh, place the Go ahead, go ahead, Mike. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead, please. Okay. You first. Uh, oh, thank you, uh, Professor. Um, I am very interested about uh, the live group of uh, in Thailand, you mean that you create the group in line that uh, the patient can ask the doctor uh, about some problem of their health, um, but such as a uh, food problem or um, some uh, abnormal side or symptom, and then the nurse will contact to them directly. No, right? no, no. We we told patient not to to tell all the information here because it's not safe, right? We need to protect uh uh patients' personal 
detailed uh, history. So uh, this one is they just like knock on the door. They just like uh, tell us, I have a problem, nurse, please contact me, something like that. This is mm -hmm. how we communicate in our live group. So we don't want them to share their personal problem to everyone there. Yeah, and then the nurse will call them. Yeah. Just a general comment, Dr. Gulapa, Dr. Hari Krishna, you all have done a lot of uh, hard work, both of you trying to get the whole uh, group together. I know you spend uh, weeks doing this, and the last two weeks, Gulapa, you're full time, deep foot, Hari, full time, deep foot. He has no time to talk to me. I know. Uh, just a comment. I think the, the Western Pacific group, the countries have grown. We hear them two years ago, one year ago, and today I hear, I listen down patiently to see the countries reporting one by one. They have improved, we have improved. The whole family has wisened up and a lot more progress has been done. Uh, this is a very positive uh, sign for us. They are doing a lot of work. And, uh, and, I, and, I, and I think uh, 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 only one thing I worry for them is we find it difficult to emulate, to use, call Harry Superman, but I think he has a super god. <laughs> uh, you see Harry's secret, he's a good one. His method is correct. He's got the whole government behind him. The Minister of Health is there, Director General of Health is there. He's running almost like won't care for the whole Malaysia with the government behind him, funding him. Uh, we can't get that in Singapore. The hospitals won't see each other eye to eye. And uh, national movement, uh, the government doesn't know what to do. And they, they won't listen to us. Our problem is the same. Diabetic food for me, uh, we don't get money. The hospital not interested. I don't know about the government. I hope they are. But the government doesn't want, the hospital is not interested. So as, as Mio, Mio and so on, uh, others pointed out, it is a problem. If only we can get more hospitals to open up, wisen up and say, for God's sake, these are patients. We have to help them. Uh, if they open up their hearts, that's the way to go. So for, for, for me, there's a big problem, but the countries have done very well despite the obstacles, so my only message for you is hang on, keep on bashing, eventually we'll reach there. Thank you. Um, so Golaba, I yeah. have a very uh, simple, I have a very simple question. So for, for all of you, so how to pay for the diabetes food care? So uh, food care such as uh, casting and a specific uh, design the shoes from our this region from different country for, such as uh, Singapore such as uh, Australia such as uh, Thailand and Malaysia and so on and uh, Lumio <laughs> okay Philippine anyone wants to answer first Okay, Georgia. Um, yeah, look, we, it's a big problem for us as well. And each state in Australia is completely different because they've got different rules, even though we're one place. We're lucky mm -hmm. that in New South Wales, you'll get one pair of shoes that are subsidised. Um, but that first, and that's the only shoe they're going to have because um, they cost so much. So our average... Uh, orthopedic shoe is over two thousand dollars which average person can't afford so yeah it's it's a serious serious problem and then of course it's people I mean culturally sensitive shoes as well because our indigenous some of our indigenous folk need to walk on the ground barefoot to you know connect with the country and so there are you know and also it gets really hot I, I work out in the bush and you're at 45 degrees trying to get someone into an orthopedic shoe is very hard so having those you know things are changing and that's where 
Philippa was good for us just to show that there are differences out there and we are sort of getting changes. But no, it's very hard. I, I, we have not sorted that out here. So one pair of shoes for one patient, if needed, how long? <laughs> Five years, 10 years, or any time if needed? We're yearly. We get a new pair each year. In New okay. South Wales, so that's in one state, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I, I can share my experience. Um, for in yeah. Thailand, uh, we are lucky that we um, work with the government, I mean, the Ministry of Health, and then they understand that diabetic food is very important, it's a huge problem. So we uh, attach the footwear to the screening protocol program. So um, for Thailand, if patients got screening and they are at high risk, that patients can get a free pair of insole, custom-made insole, and a free pair of shoes yearly, once a year. Wow. Yeah, so that's the system in Thailand. I think in some countries, like in mine, uh, Australia is lucky, you know, 2,000 every year. Oh, God, we can't get 200 every year. But in some countries like ours, the way to go about the problem is to do a research project. And uh, there, the research grants will cover free for the patients that you deal with. And that's how we have been going on for 20 years, from one grant to another. And, and uh, my patients get free. So that's the only way. Maybe other countries might follow the same way. Unfortunately, the hospitals won't pay. And the government has not thought about it. Gulapa, maybe you are the first to go. You are the expert. You are the superman of footwear, <laughs> I would say. <laughs> Gulapa, yes. I think this is very important uh, for the prevention of uh, diabetes food. So government uh, uh, support, very important. So yeah. if we know something in different area, we, we, we can do something more in equal uh, policy for, for, for us. Yeah. We will promote the government to be, uh, to do better yeah. support for us. Thank you. Hari, your election is going on now. Yep, your yes, elections yes. will come on in another, uh, we hope one year or two years. When election time, the last one was election time. That's how they came out battle against diabetes. We are waiting for part two battle. Somebody will declare war in parliament again, I hope. But yours is going on now. Well, the government is actively sourcing our support. That's the time that we approach them nicely and they will listen. That portal will close. After election day, nothing will happen. Yeah, according to, I mean, our side in Malaysia, what happens is uh, civil servants, when we, we can actually uh, what it prescribe uh, medical grade shoes and all that, and it's covered by the uh, hospital or whichever place they're working for. So it's, but they have to claim back. And pensioners also get that. And then those who are in the private sector who actually uh, work for, I mean, who actually pay their social security also is covered. That means every year, at least one pair of proper customized autosis and uh, shoes are actually given. So that we have. But those who are, Neither here nor there, ah, that is the one that's the problem. So that's a bit more difficult. Anyway, minister has promised that uh, he's hoping that, you know, uh, looking after diabetic foot wounds and everything else into the community is the next step. So he hopes to uh, support even more after this. So if he wins, then we have a good chance of getting more funding for that. basically. I would say we had to convince our politicians that a shoe is as important as a wheelchair, like get them to understand that it's a wheelchair, it's, it's important to subsidise as, you know, crutches are a wheelchair, it's a, it's a tyre. Yeah. Yeah. Good thought, Georgina, I didn't think of it that way, we have to fight that way, and that's a very good point. It's not fashion, you know, we're not yeah. doing this to make them look pretty. <laughs> Sadly. Okay, I think uh, 
with that, I would like to thank all of you all, uh, and also what he called this, uh, Dr. Gulapa and the whole team to be with, with us the whole time for this uh, session. And uh, wish you all the best and happy World Diabetes Day. And uh, most importantly is prevention, 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 education, education, education. So <laughs> we'll see you back soon. And uh, it's nice seeing all of you all, but you know, physically, hopefully next year we can meet physically. All right. So with that, thank you very much. Take care. Thank you, everyone. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.